subscribe and share. Hello everybody, my name is Craig Bennett and I'm the founder and owner of Tech Views and Help. And today I am going to answer a quick question with a very detailed answer. And this is a question from Mel Friend. They are asking, how do you make a VPN connection between an external device to a home or business network to view or play with things that are normally blocked on a given network? Uh, that, that's a summary. But as far as that goes, I was going to actually do what they suggested with a tutorial, a step-by-step -step tutorial and several videos on it. But I um I don't use PF since I was thinking about doing it in VMware. But the problem is, is there's a lot of people who actually has asked me this particular thing. And there's a lot of open source and, and non in a um, router there's a lot of open source operating system for router and on and I'm going to be using my Netgear Nighthawk operating system it's uh, you know it's, it, it's, it'll do its job but as far as that goes that, that's just one thing that you gotta keep in mind when you're dealing with these now I want to mention something real quick before we jump into the break and then into the actual thing I, uh, I want to mention that if you're doing this in a workplace, I would advise all to all my might not to do this because you will get fired. There is just no question about it. Because here's the thing, if your business, uh, whatever you're working at, blocks these things, they're doing it for a reason. And if they see that you're a security risk, and specifically you try to circumvent the system, you will get reported and you will get fired because the IT person is not going to be faithful to you when their head is on the slate. So that's a huge thing, a very huge thing. But with this in mind, you um, in school, like this person, they, uh, they might be all right if they're doing it outside of class, but if you're doing it inside class, while it's known videos and all that other junk, it uh, distracts everybody. The problem is, is if you do this in class and the teacher has special software like uh, mirroring or something like this, one, what you're doing will be caught. So you're not stopping that part. But the bigger part is you could potentially be disrupting their network, their internal network. And, um, and the end result is you can end up getting kicked out of class. And a lot of people don't know this when you go into college, from, from high school to college. High school, you get kicked out of class. So what? You just go to detention, maybe a suspension. Very rarely it will go to expulsion. But for the most part, it's detention or whatever. In college, no. See, here's the thing. You pay for classes, uh, even though it's not a uh, profit school, because let's say you go to private school, it's the same thing there. But if, it, if even if you go to a nonprofit for like, I don't know, community college, university, or whatever it may be, you're paying for class. They won't refund you if you do get kicked out. If you get kicked out, chances are you'll get kicked out of the entire school. So, yeah. Or they'll keep you and they'll tell you to retake the class that you screwed up, even though they kicked you out of it. So, yeah. Don't do this unless if you're in the right circumstances. So with this in mind, oh, and uh, another thing is if you're with a, a data cap, don't do this. Just forget about it. Don't, don't even think about it. Say, oh, this is not possible because you will hit that data cap if you're actually using it. But uh, with that in mind, let's jump into a quick personal advertisement and I'll get a little bit more into this in a second or two. Thanks for sticking around during the ads. Please feel free to click on the icons shown to be taken to areas where you can help us. All links will be below for mobile and other users. Welcome back. Now, real quick, I want to mention something before I forget. You, if you're running Windows, you, and also I think OS X, 
and, and obviously Linux, you can go and just download something on your computer to make it into like a VPN service. So if you can't find your settings on your router to do this, then you do have options there. I'm not really going to show you how to do that. Uh, I'm, I might in the future, but definitely not in this video. So if you guys are wondering about this, then just let me know and I'll, I'll see what I can do. But that is an option. So let's be crystal clear. And what did I mean? This will eat your data cap. So basically how this works, let's just get into the basics of it without going into the tactical. Let's say that you're at location A, your home router's location B, you have the VPN stuff set up, you have the stuff set up in location A to do it. What happens is location A, it will actually ask location B to uh, set up a network. So what happens is you will enable the VPN stuff in location A, it will send something out to location or to the internet and then it will send it to location B everything will look right then um, what will end up happening is something will form called a VPN tunnel a VPN tunnel is used where it encrypts this stuff so it acts as a shell around the data plus on top of that if someone tries to break the shell if they try to that they, they don't even have to do it if they try to break the shell, the entire tunnel and the data in it will collapse, so it will no longer exist, and then it will recreate itself somewhere else. So it's very important. That's how it's supposed to work. It, it, so make sure it works like that on yours. And that's with VPN, a proxy is you know just basically un, unprotected. But um, you can't be using a proxy for what they this particular question wants. You need to have it encrypted so the school doesn't know what you're doing or whatever place doesn't know what you're doing. So with this in mind, once you got the VPN tunnel set up, the uh, and all you will see is press a button. Oh, it's connected. Great. So uh, what will end up happening is let's say that I want to download something off the internet. Let's say off of techreviewsnub.com. What will end up happening is I would put in my browser, the website techreviewsnub.com and whatever else to get to the download portion. Then it will go into the VPN tunnel. It will encrypt on while it's in the device itself before it leaves. It will encrypt having the show around the data. And um, what would end up happening is the uh, stuff will be sent out to the internet through the VPN tunnel back down to location B. Then it will decrypt the shell, will decrypt. And that means it left the VPN tunnel, so it's officially out of it. Then it will leave again, go into the internet, go into the TechViews Now servers. Then it will come back with let's say that what you want is seven gigabytes so uh your router will down download seven gigabytes or stream seven gigabytes over to you and um, let's say it downloads it will download seven gigabytes put it into a vpn tunnel by encrypting it before it leaves then put it back on the internet sorry about that put it back on the internet and then it will go back down to location A and then it will decrypt again and um, and it will go to your computer so so why is it important for this uh, real quick example on what you might have missed you downloaded 7 gigabytes on the router and you uploaded 7 gigabytes on the router that means you use 14 gigabytes right there so that's very important and that's what i mean it will eat your data what's been found for those of you who don't know and who's outside of the united states and in a area i wish was like in the united states like south korea is the simple fact is is uh, i think a study was done a couple months ago 
I can't remember the exact numbers, but I think it was like 93% of the households out there in the United States has data caps. Again, I don't know, remember the exact number, but it was real high. It was around that point. And I think it was 97% of those, or 98% uh, percent of those had a data cap of 100 gigabytes. Over 100 gigabytes, you either had to pay extra or you were throttled. So that is very important. So let's just say that you don't have a data cap, you're not worried about it, and um, you know what, let's just do it. So this is pretty simple, it's a two-step process really. You enable it on your router, during your enabling, make sure you go into the um, area that you can change your port number. Look up a, a um, common VPN port. Look that up. And don't use them. Make sure you have a uncommon port. And the same thing with games. Some games will have its own ports. Make sure you don't use those so make sure you use a uncommon port and an uncommon uh, port for games so with that in mind what went end up happening is uh, from the school side or whatever they can block websites by doing two things one blocking the actual website itself the second is blocking the port. So if you use a VPN like this method, they won't be able to see what you're going to because of the VPN tunnel, but they will see the port and they'll say, oh, this is a common VPN port. So we're blocking it. So make sure you're doing an uncommon port. And the second step or whatever is download the proper software onto your device and run it some devices will already have the software put in there you just need to put in the proper things so if you're using a school's computer i'll advise against this also i forgot to mention that at the start but if you're using your own personal thing it will be a lot easier to deal with so again you really shouldn't be doing this if you do get caught doing this, do anything illegal, immoral, or uh, something that will get you in trouble in any form or fashion, then it's not on my head since I, one, told you a few times not to do this, and two, because I physically didn't do it for you. But anyways, uh, as far as that goes, and uh, uh, another thing that th this might confuse some people you won't really see this on many non-open source VPN or open source um, routers. Uh, so like this, it doesn't have this option, but many open source routers will have this option. It is uh, connecting all traffic to a VPN. So what's the difference? Well, you can actually connect traffic external traffic to your router through its own vpn then you can have all the traffic that leaves that router goes to another vpn and so it gets encrypted with whatever vpn it goes to so i use private internet access and let's say i have it run through that so it'll encrypt go through their vpn tunnel decrypt on their private internet access side and it'll spit out Another thing to mention is anything outside the VPN tunnel, it will be able to see what you're doing. So that's a huge, huge thing. So let's say that you're, um, I don't know, you're, you're, you're out and um, you don't want your internet provider to see what you're doing. Even though what's between location A and B can't be seen. It, it can, but it, it is encrypted. From location B to let's say C, the website that you're going to, that is not encrypted depending on things. And even if it wasn't, even if it was encrypted and it's not in a VPN tunnel, then your IP can still see where it's going to 
So a way to block that is by using a, a another VPN. So like what I was just talking about. But anyways, hopefully this has answered some questions and um, hopefully this has helped some people out. Now, as far as things goes, if uh, if you found this helpful, please like, please subscribe, please share. And please feel free to check out my other videos and also the links that I provide. And also, if uh, if you don't like this, go ahead and leave a dislike, but tell me why it's like fiction in future videos. But again, this has been Craig Bennett, found an honor to take a view of Snope. And I hope you have a great day.